Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video you will learn how to structure your React application so it will be easily scalable and easily supportable. And this structure can fit also any other framework in frontend or even in backend. So let's jump right into it. So React by itself doesn't have any restrictions or architecture how we must structure our files and how we need to organize everything. So here I created the empty folder and inside readme file. So here I want to write examples of our structure so you can always go here and check how do you need to structure your files. And my idea to show it will be that I am writing something like slash source and it is meaning the folder. So inside for example source we have file main.js. So actually if I am writing something with intendation it means that we have this file inside. And if it is starting with slash I am meaning the folder. So in this case source is a folder, main.js is a file. And if I have here foo this means that foo is a folder inside source. I hope it will be understandable for you so let's get started. But here is one important thing to remember. We are always trying to write only single entity inside single file. This means if we have component, we are writing only single component inside a file. If we have class, we create additional file for this class. We are not creating like five classes or five components in a single file. It is just difficult to support and understand. So here let's start with the source folder because normally in all frameworks or even in create react app for react for example we have source folder like our main folder for the application. So normally doesn't matter what framework we are using we have two different types how we can structure our application. So first of all this is by feature and secondly by data type. So let's start by structuring by data type. This means that all files of the same data type were put in, in the same directory. For example, we have components inside React. This is why here we can create slash components folder inside source. And let's say that we are creating several pages. For example, we have login page. This is why here is login.js component. We also need register page. So this is register.js component and feed page. So this is feed.js component. So actually these are components of React and we are putting them in slash components. So we are grouping all components by type. So here we have type components. This is why inside we have only components. But now the question is how we can share something between. For example we have some component and it is shareable between login and register. For example authentication form. And it makes sense to create here one more folder on the top inside source and name it for example common. So here we can create auth form.js inside, maybe also button.js because it is reusable and maybe select.js. So actually in common we also store components. But inside our common folder we are putting only our reusable components. So actually components inside components folder are normally route components, which means login is actually a route component, so we are rendering it on the specific router. Now let's say that we start to fetch some data and work with API. For this we probably need one more folder and let's name it API and here we can create some files where we will put all our logic to work with API, maybe some fetch requests or some normalizers. This is why here I want to create feed.js and auth.js. And actually these are not components, these are just a bunch of functions inside our file. So we have API folder, here we have everything which is related to our API. And inside feed.js we have all functions that are related to working with feed and actually with this feed component and here we have auth. So actually here we can put all methods that we need for example for our login component and register component. Now let's imagine that we are using Redux together with React. In this case we have something like actions, reducers and so on. So for this we can create additional folder for example actions and here we have first our feed actions. So here we are packing all actions regarding feed. 
And let's say that we have some action regarding authentications. So here we created auth.js and here we have all actions which are related to login or register. And also we can make the same for reducers. So here is our reducers folder and we need reducer for feed and reducer for auth. And actually you can name these files like you want. The main idea that you group your files by entity. So we're grouping reducers, actions, API, components, and shareable components. But the structure has one small problem. Let's say that we are working on login page and we really want to split it in different files. So actually here we can't really do this because we have only single login JS. And this is fine if this file is small, but if you have like 200, 300 lines, you really want to split it. And to do this, we can really create for each component a folder. So here we can create components login and we are moving this login JS inside. And even if you want, you can create here like index.js and in this case you know that this is the root component of the login. So this is up to you. I prefer to have here login.js. In this case, I know that the name of the component is login.js. And in this case, we can write here some additional components. For example, here I have maybe top bar dot JS. And the idea is that this top bar component is only being used inside this component login. So we are not moving it outside and this is not reusable. We just split our component in order to make it more understandable. But with this structure, I highly recommend you to not have a mix between just files and folders. If you start by writing folders, then just keep doing it. So here we have register and inside we have register even if we have single file. And the same here with feed. We have here single file, but if we have more files in the future, we can easily add them here. So this structure is really good for small and medium project. Why not for big project? Because just imagine that you have something like, I don't know, 500 components. And just imagine that you have here in actions or maybe API folder 500 files. It really is not supportable anymore because your project is too big and you have too much stuff inside single folder. And in this case, we need to look on the second type of application structure and this is by feature. So let's say here that this was by data type and let's create now by feature. So what is it about? We are structuring our application by feature and we are also starting with source. But now the idea is that we are grouping all our files not by data type but by feature. For example here let's say that we have a feature feed. So now inside this folder feed we have everything which is related to this feature. For example here we can have components, we can have here API, reducers or actions. And as you can see, all stuff that we had here in different folders, we have now in single folder feed. And there is a huge benefit of it. First of all, you can scale this indefinitely because all this stuff is inside feed. And secondly, if you don't need feature anymore, you can just simply remove the whole folder and all this stuff inside will be automatically removed. With this approach here, by data type, we can't really do that and we really need to go through all folders and remove everything what is related to our feature feed. Also, with feature approach, we can easily nest our features. So here we can say that we have feature auth and inside we have two more features. First of all, we have login, so inside we also have some components and we have feature register. And here inside we also have some components. And actually we are grouping these two features because maybe they are related to one out feature. Also with this approach we can create shared files between login and register. So for example here we can say that we have something shared and inside the shared folder we can say that we have components and maybe API or even actions or reducers. So as you can see, the idea is that this folder shared is not shareable between everything in your application. It is nested inside auth, which means it is only shareable between all these features inside your auth folder. And actually, just for your information, this by feature structure is often called by modules. So we are naming features like modules, which actually means that auth is a module, login is a module, and register is a module.
Now the question is only what we can do if we have some shareable stuff between different modules. For example, auth and feed. We can actually create here shared folder with exactly the same structure like here inside auth. So I will just copy it and paste here. And the main idea that this structure must be the same. This is why it will be easier to support. So here we have exactly the same structure like in this level, which actually means that this shared folder in every level will look the same. So here inside shared we can share our components, for example button, select or maybe authentication form, some API requests or maybe actions when we need them in several places, or even reducers. And of course, API actions and reducers are just examples. If you are working not with React, but maybe with Vue, with Angular, or with other frameworks, even on backend, you have different entities here, and you can group them in the same way. So these were two main file structures for any framework. And actually you have pros and cons in both of them. So here when you are using by data type, you have less folders and this is easier to understand. Here you must create more folders, because for every feature you have lots of folders, but this is more scalable. Because in this case you can nest features and you can scale amount of features indefinitely, because all these files are not in a single folder, but they are related to feature. Also, if you want to improve your programming skills, I have a lot of advanced courses regarding different web technologies, and I will link them down in the description box below, so don't forget to check them out. And if you like this video and you want more content like this, don't forget to put thumbs up to support me and subscribe to the channel. And if you didn't like this video, consider watching it once again on increased speed, that might help. And I will see you in my next video.